What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of According to Cos and Queen. And as always, I am Cos. And I'm Queen. And these are conversations that are brought to you by a husband and wife in the privacy of our own home that we sometimes bring to you guys to make you laugh, to make you think, sometimes to be introspective, but as always to open the lines of communication between husbands and wives, men and women, friends and lovers, all of that good stuff. Of course, we are on all streaming services. Y'all know the drill by now. This is episode 71. We're almost at the end of season three. All right. So you know what to do. Check us out on all streaming services all right you can check us out at black with no chaser radio make sure that you download the bwnc radio app that's the bwnc radio app make sure you download that thing all right make sure you check us out there and all the great podcasts over there as well all right make sure you check us out on all social media platforms all right we are on facebook all right facebook.com slash cos and queen we are on instagram instagram.com slash cos and queen twitter we're on there as well tiktok we're on there as well you can check us out at all of those spots man make sure you check us out on social media and of course if you're watching us and you see our bright shiny faces we're on youtube so make sure you follow us at youtube.com slash brad kamikaze franklin that's youtube.com slash Brad Kamikaze Franklin. Make sure you do that. We're inching up closer to a thousand subscribers. We had about four or five more folks who uh, joined us on that page. Make sure you do that. Make sure you follow all the content on that page. Make sure you follow Kaz and Queen on the social media sites. This is brought to you, of course, by the Kundi Collection. <laughs> www. You like I did that? By the Kundi Collection. Collection. www kundicollective.com make sure that you check that out uh it's getting uh, a little bit warmer spring is here spring has sprung almost doesn't quite feel like it where we're at but uh it's almost sprung so go to the website of course here's one of the shirts right here resilience is a black thing all right Express your blackness. Express your love for Mississippi. www.kundicollective.com. You can get the Resilience is a Black Thing shirt at that website. Check that out there. All of the other great designs that exist there. And <clears throat> if you got something that you want us to talk about, you got a subject, uh, you want to get our advice on something, whether it be something about marriage, relationships, any of that, uh, holler at us. Kaz and Queen at gmail.com. All right. It's Kaz and Queen at gmail.com. It's up on the screen as well. If you're listening to us, it's K A Z, Kaz, A N D, and Queen, Q U E E N, Kaz and Queen at gmail.com. Send us an email and say, hey, uh, I got this relationship problem or I got this relationship question. I got this marriage problem. All of that good stuff. Make sure that you do that. All right. And make sure that, uh, you holler at us we are getting ready for love and life 12 and it's coming up very soon and we'll be talking about that in just a second it is our annual event our annual panel and it's coming up and we'd love to see you guys there and we would love for you guys to tune in on the youtube channel because we stream it live as it's happening and as she knows anything can happen any question can happen. Any conversation can pop up at this panel, but we present it for everybody in the world to be able to check it out because we think that it's a, a cool thing. So speaking of uh, dating and uh, all of the like, uh, I asked you a few questions before we actually got on board. But I sent you this uh, TikTok post that had been making the rounds here lately. There is a young lady who uh, seems to be a pretty popular influencer, but she says that uh, she has had her feel of the dating sites she has not had any luck in the dating field she's a single mom things have not been going well for her and she too like Zacchaeus Jones and we talked about this last week she too uh put her dating future on the uh proverbial backs of her TikTok followers and she started a GoFundMe she says she's trying to raise $3,500 so that she can join a dating site and find her a mate because it has been going so terribly for her. There were a lot of women that said that they were just embarrassed for womanhood for her doing that. Some people said, Hey, it's cool. You know, as we talked about it on last week, she may actually get that $3,500 to be able to do that. It seems to be the thing to do. Now, if you're a TikTok influencer, you just ask for some money and there will be some money coming in from the people who support you. But as a woman, 
and you know watching the video and checking it out and you know you talk to a lot of women all of the time who are single and, and dating and in the mix of the muck and the mire of the dating world what did you feel about that uh i know that is, it, is this like his own check my it check. sounds like a long pause for those of you who are not looking at me but right. uh because you're beautiful thank you baby yes. they might um at you. let me tell you something mm-hmm. this thing here this whole thing this this entire thought process concerns me mm-hmm. i don't know how her dating issues is something that other people many who are probably single as well right um would invest in that seems a little like i can't i can't that right up under that just don't really make sense to me uh but i also have another part of me that's like you know i believe in the whole shooting your shot i mean you know put it out there if you get some bites and you're completely honest this is what i'm doing it for and whether or not it comes to fruition uh, if, but if you like it pick it up if you don't throw it back throw it back you see, know so right. i kind of on the one hand it's like okay girl i see you taking control of your situation but then the other part of me is like is this really you taking control of your situation or are you just kind of like you putting all your eggs into the dating site Basket. bowl yes you know so yes. if that doesn't work then what you coming back with another go find me or what because ultimately it's not gonna happen until it happens explain because I, I don't know and maybe you don't but explain the thought like the fact that you could have a site that you could get people to pay you thirty five hundred dollars for you to seemingly match them up with someone. It just seems like a scam hmm. at the end of the day. But there are a lot of dating services and sites that get that kind of money. But thirty five hundred dollars worth of desperation or thirty five hundred dollars worth of whatever you want to call it. Is it worth that much to get somebody to do something for you that you could probably have happen to you organically anyway? I would assume that these matchmakers are uh, learned. Like they've studied, they've researched, they've um, put some time into figuring out what works for people. I feel like we could do that. I do it every day in some way, shape or form. And I ain't getting nearly thirty five hundred dollars for it. Mm, not close to it. So, um, but I I do see the uh, the effort that I put into the work that I do for people. I see it. I see it happening. I see it coming to fruition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I'm not really necessarily saying that that's not possible. That there aren't people out there who are able to specialize in get, putting people together because all that really takes is experience and attention to detail. Um, so it, I'm not saying that it's not worth it, but eventually, no matter what kind of work somebody else does, right. you still going to have to do what you need to do to get what you want. So I really don't know how I, how, you know, I feel necessarily about that because if they're not teaching you about the, the, the issues that's keeping you away from finding somebody and they just matching you with somebody on paper, right? that's not a guarantee. Um, right. But is that to say that you shouldn't invest somehow anyway? I don't know. I would probably, I'm inclined to believe that if you put the work in on yourself, maybe with some guidance, I just absolutely believe that when you're ready, your person is going to come to you. You don't have to go looking for them. That's my personal experience and my personal belief. So I think that you do your best service to yourself to work on the issues that you may have that interfere with you or block you from getting what's yours because universally what what you put out, you're going to get back. So if you're right. getting back a whole bunch of garbage, that means you're putting out garbage-like yes. stuff. Uh, so clear yes. up the garbage, yes. and you won't need a matchmaker. 
I, I feel that <clears throat> that energy is reciprocal. I do feel like organically, I really honestly subscribe to the thought process that there is someone for everyone. Sure. In the world. I subscribe to that thought process. And I really honestly believe that a lot of people try to rush that process. And I also believe that there are some people who will probably shirk that process and their person has maybe drifted past them two or three times and they weren't concentrating and paying attention. And maybe it's because, again, in the organic sense, maybe they weren't ready to receive it. But just the thought of paying thirty five hundred dollars to get somebody to match you up when you could literally run into your soulmate in the grocery store or the gas station or the gas station uh at church or, or on facebook dating whatever they do like it's for absolutely free i don't know i don't know i i i'd have to measure the success rate for these matchmaking services but i without that period you go you can still find the person that is for you absolutely. um absolutely. So i do know that for sure because yeah. i didn't use one so, um, and I, I what'd you say it again. I know that you can find a person that's for you without a matchmaking service oh, because I didn't use one that's and correct. I found mine. Yes. I so did too. I know, but I didn't go looking for you and, I and you didn't come looking, looking, looking for me. That's correct. And you did not come until I had made a plethora of bad decisions. We both continue to make them. Yes. But like I had to learn from each one of those relationships, what, I contributed to it so that I could change it and be better. And even by the time I got with you, there was still debris and I'm still working through it. So, you know, you have to um, put yourself in a different type of mindset. I believe this is all spiritual. And I think people are taking the spiritual aspect out of it. And for me, there's no rationalization for how that works without some spiritual element. In talking to single women and you do, you know, in, in counseling your clients and just in regular conversation. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people reach out to you because of the work that you do. Um, what are single women saying now about the current dating pool that I'm sure has P in it? Uh, That's what they saying. So what I'm finding is a lot of, I don't have a whole lot of younger clients. Some I do have a few, but the majority of my clients are 35 and older. Right. Mm-hmm. And so either either they've been married or not been married, but they are just kind of set in their own selves. They've been single for a while and they've made the adaptations to be able to be independent and take care of themselves. And they've lived alone for so long. Most of the issue is being able to compromise Mm -hmm. and learn how to live with someone or be with someone or be in a relationship where you have to consider the other person's feelings, where you are not the priority all the time, like somebody else has to be a priority. That's really difficult for women who have taught them who are innately like that, but then taught themselves not to be that way and now have to relearn how to be Mm. a submissive by whatever that that uh d- whatever that definition means to them because mm-hmm. i've learned that it's not just one definition for submission oh it's not it, absolutely submission not. is defined ind- individually so whatever that means for them just being able to welcome someone else into their life is not as easy as one would think correct so while you out here saying i'm ready to date i'm ready to date i'm ready to date i'm ready for something serious i'm ready to be married are you though mm. are you though <laughs> Are you actually ready to lay beside one person for the rest of your life? Considering that you've been in the bed by yourself, get the type of sheets you want, you know, go to bed when you want to wake yep. up when you want to have your alarm on, however you want to come and go as you please. come and go as you please. All of those things have to, that could be a real problem. Once you put somebody in your life, if you're not willing to bend and compromise and make room for them. So that's a lot of what I see. And understanding that you can still, because you're an adult, you can still come and go as you please, but you have to learn discernment in that. And you have to learn responsibility in that because you can go, you can come and go as you please. I can come and go as I please, but we have enough sense to know how that works within the framework of a marriage. And even that can be determined on a marriage by marriage, case by case 
mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. Like what works for us may not work for everybody. Absolutely. And you often say this this thing about, you know, you can come and go as you please. That's not necessarily true, baby. You be saying that, I think that's cap. Because if I stay out too long and I'm cool, you know who I'm with, you know where I'm at, you know what I'm doing. If I stay out longer than your level of comfort, that that's a problem. <sighs> okay. We've yeah. kind of touched on this before, but I just can't before, let you keep sliding that in there. Well, I got to slide it in because what I'm saying is at the end of the day is that there's an element in you when you're out and you're doing that. There's an element in you that says, I need to wrap this up and get home. Yes, there's but if element. I was single, that element wouldn't exist. Exactly. Like, I only come home because I got you at home. But you don't necessarily have to because you're grown. If you don't I have want it, you to talk to me the next day, you I don't, do. Well, you don't have a curfew is what I'm saying. I don't have a curfew. But I also know that I can't just go out and freely – roam around and come back in whenever I get ready and I wouldn't want to because that would be disrespectful to the household. I think that's the point. We so have that's respect the point. for each other. Yes. So, you know, you have to learn that within the framework of a relationship because when you're single, you can come in at three in the morning if you want to. You're yeah. still grown when you're married and you can come in at three in the morning because you're grown and the other person does not own you or you're not property to the other person but when you're out there you say to yourself okay it's 12 31 o'clock i've been out here long enough let me get home it's that kind of thing but if the person that you're with don't have a problem with that then that's a whole and it could thing be and altogether. if i and if i do know who you're out with and you've already prepped you know us both with the conversation of this is what i'm going to be doing then yeah you could be out till three in the morning at that point because we've talked about it and then I know what's happening and I know who you're with. Just not a random, I'm just out in the streets till three in the morning. But And it ain't regular. And it ain't regular. You know what I'm saying? Special occasions. Uh family ooh. in town. Family in town. Somebody's birthday, something you know, that like that. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you know, we understand that totally. But you know, that is a part of the marriage thing. It's a part of the compromise. Yes, the compromise in your, you know, your individuality is still there, but now you are a, are a part of a marriage. You are part of a bond. So now you got to move a little bit different. So another thing that I noticed with single ladies is the discernment is off. Mm, mm-hmm. Some of them have difficulty identifying whether or not they on the same page as the person that they're dating or interested in. Mm-hmm. And I, so in some cases it's because there just isn't clarity. Not that they haven't asked for it, but they've been spoon fed, spoon fed enough to stick around. That ultimately goes back to what I was talking about originally, where that individual has to do some self work to identify why she's tolerating that. Like, mm-hmm. why are you allowing someone to make you a afterthought or a second thought an or option. an option? Yes. yes, an option. What is it about you that's telling you it's okay for someone to treat you this way? So I'm seeing that some. I'm also seeing, uh, but again, this is where therapy and guidance and the stuff that I do and some of my social workers, psychologists, friends and things of that nature are having to face is because you can't alleviate the work, the self work, the the elevation, the spirit work that needs to go into yourself. If you are still having this issue, that means you're not ready, sis. You ain't ready. So what you give out there, you're going to get that back. Do the work on yourself. It doesn't require a matchmaker it re- unless she's matching you up with yourself. That's where the work needs to be done. Mm-hmm. The matchmaker needs to be teaching you how to love yourself. Mm-hmm. That's not trying to go out there and find somebody to love you as you are because eventually you're going to do that work. And then that situation that she matched you up with ain't going to work because you're going to grow past the person that you are being matched with at the time where you needed to do the self work. That makes sense. <laughs> It makes a lot of sense because there are instances where people are not comfortable with themselves and have not discovered who they are. And it's going to make it impossible for you to find somebody. Because what you draw to you is going to be in the confusion of where you are in that moment. And if you were really in tune with yourself, a lot of the BS that you have put up with in your dating life would not be happening because you would instantly shut that shit down. 
I think about that all the time when I was with my abuser for Mm. 11 years. Yeah. There is no way the person I am today would have tolerated the stuff that 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 younger version of me tolerated. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea who I was. I did not know how to recognize good love, not just love, good love. Good love, I had no idea what that was. Mm. Um, so I took it, and that became the format, or or that became the formula for me on what love was. So any opposition that my spirit might have had to whether or not this was real, I convinced myself to believe that this is what relationships were. Yes. So I was in an abusive relationship for many, many years thinking I deserved it or I did something to make him do it or I ain't going to do no better or Mm. I'm too fat and he's taking pity on me for loving me like this is what I got to deal with. The I can't do any better thing is 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 taking folks through it. Yeah, that's another thing that I see a lot. Like I just got to be here. He's been taking care of me. He's been doing this and he's been doing it. And a lot of marriages i see where women are saying i don't have i'm not prepared like i got a plan to leave which i understand that but planning can take forever it can take forever it can never it's the same thing about you know i'm gonna do such and such when i get my pocket straight or i'm gonna we gonna get married when my money gets straight or i'm gonna travel when this this and this happens and that never happens uh you should go into the marriage you know, preparing and making sure that, you know, there is still a piece of you that can survive outside of the union. You don't lose your, what I'm saying is you don't give up yourself. Don't give up yourself. Don't lose your individuality, even when you're coming into a union. And and for women, in a lot of these cases now, because you have a lot of these women who are talking about this, you know, I don't go 50-50 and I don't do this and the man's got to pay 100% of the bills and yada, 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 whoop de whoop de woo You know, I've seen too many instances and in too many cases, A, where they were, A, getting cheated on and the man had an entirely uh, separate family around the corner or B, the man ended up cheating and leaving anyway and left the woman not knowing how to do anything, not knowing how to pay a bill, not knowing how to take care of herself, not knowing how to do anything, not even knowing how to, you know, take your car to the mechanic and let them fix it, like not having any fathoming of how to operate in the real world. And these things happen when you get into the I can't do any better, you know, and this is, you know, this man is my whole entire world and he takes care of everything. And then you find yourself holding the bag. And you're alone. You know, also, and I got, I cannot, I can't not mention this. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who you are, flaws and all, watch out because you will find someone who tells you who you need to be. Mm -hmm. And that may not be authentically you. It's probably not going to be authentically you because he will mold you into what he wants you to be and not who you are. So you have to know who you are before you can even contemplate being ready for a relationship and something significant and especially marriage, because that is supposed to last forever. I know that's weird to y'all, but marriage is supposed to be till death do us part. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, from my position. Right. So um, you need to know who you are before you get into it. You know, before you even say them vows, because those things, the vows are for real. There are a lot of people playing around with vows. I do recognize Mm that. But vows are for real. You should be ready, meaning I know exactly who I am, even though I'm still working on certain areas. I know exactly who I am and you are not going to make me compromise who I am. But I can bend to love you, to be with you, to make this thing work. You don't have to compromise yourself to compromise into a marriage where you are become taking two and becoming one. You have to understand that I am one, first of all. Yeah. And then I like the one that you are. So we're going to come together and make this a union together. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's a slippery slope, but I see that a lot. Like people give up them. I did it myself. I gave up everything I was to be in this relationship because he convinced me that 
without him, I was nothing. And and a good relationship or a good sign is someone who does not require you to give up yourself and everything, your friends, the people. You're the first man I ever been with that wasn't like that. Every man I dated made me give up something that was true to who I am. Because I'm not a fuck nigga. And I think it's really just as simple as that. I'm not a fuck nigga, so... I have to thank your mama for that. I don't know how she gave you that. I want to be able to give that to our children because that is a significant thing for a man to own. That The kind of confidence and awareness to be able to love someone for who they are without trying to make them be who you want them to be. I mean, it's, it, that's the way it's supposed to be. I don't think people get that in this day and age. And it's something that I tell you know, guys, too, that are out there in the dating pool because, you, you know, you guys listen to a lot of these other podcasts and y'all listen to these super misogynistic, uh, hyper masculine, uh, whole tepery dudes on these podcasts telling you about, you know, there's no good women out there and the women do this and the women do that and they won't submit and blah, 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 blah. They won't let the man lead and that kind of thing. Listen, let me tell you something that's really simple. And cut and dry, fellas. When a woman is into you, when a woman likes you, when a woman really genuinely wants to be with you, none of that other shit is going to come into play at all. Y'all not going to have a discussion about 50-50. Y'all not going to have a discussion about going to the Cheesecake Factory first. Y'all not going to have to have a discussion about submission. Y'all not going to have to have any of those discussions. If the woman is into you and wants to be with you, She's going to want to be with you and she's willing to work through all of that. If you are a good and genuine dude, you don't have to worry about that. She's not going to care. When you start hearing these conversations about you didn't take me here and you didn't take me here and you didn't spend this much on me in this date and you need to be paying these bills and this, this and this and that and that and the other, she ain't feeling you. Mm. Woo, boy, you got me excited. She not that is a you. word. That she, is a word. She's not feeling you. She's not feeling you and all she is in it for is to see how much she can get out of you and how much she can squeeze out of you. Because when she's feeling you, it ain't going to matter. You when, can take when a her woman is anywhere. Feeling you, when a woman is feeling you, it does not matter. I There's told you, remember when I told you, <laughs> I don't think you believe me, but I told you one time, baby, I don't care if we are in a cardboard box on the side of the road. You did. I will be with you anyway. You did. You did. And I meant that with my yes, whole you heart. You did. And I tell people that to this day because I remember that conversation. I remember you saying it. And I remember you saying, I will stay under a bridge in a cardboard box with you. And that was one of the things, again, that just solidified and let me know then at that point that this is where I was supposed to be. And you were my person uh, because I didn't really have a whole lot of shit when we started talking. Didn't really have a vehicle. Didn't have a place. Didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but we knew that we wanted to be with each other. And you were willing at that time to go through whatever it was that we was going through. And I was willing to go through with you because you was going through some stuff at your folks house. So we were willing at that time to be around each other and be in each other's company with no lights and no heat and no food in the fridge just and no way to get anywhere, just conversation. <laughs> that's all that we had. And that's when I think we both knew that we wanted to be with each other. I and always there was got no, the feeling that you didn't really believe me or that maybe you were concerned that I felt that way a little bit. What did it feel like? I mean, it was, you, you know, it was, it, it was the concern there. Cause even though you clearly saw, I didn't really have shit going on at the time. I was still at the time, you know, in the midst of me doing the music thing, I was still known. People knew who I was. People knew my name. They didn't know what my story was behind the scenes. They knew me as Kamikaze, mm -hmm. you know, from Crooked Letters. That's who they knew me as. They didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. So I still was leery about people, especially women, connecting themselves to me or wanting to be around me because I still had a level of at least, you know, local celebrity that was here at that time uh and i had to be sure that you know you wanted to be with me for me and not for what you felt like you could get being adjacent to me at the time mm -hmm. and you didn't and you proved that uh because there was no discussion of you can't take me out there was no discussion of 
you should have took me here and spent this much money on my date. There was no discussion of you don't have your own car. There was no discussion of you ain't got your crib yet. There was no discussion on any of that. It was just us getting to know each other and organically growing. And that's why I tell people all the time, if she really is digging you, these are conversations that you want to have. Y'all are having these conversations on these podcasts because y'all are trying to holler at women that don't want y'all. Our dates, and I'm, they might pull my sister card for this one, but our dates in the beginning were fried okra. Yep. Gas station hamburgers or sandwiches. Yep. Water or Kool Aid. Yep. Candles. Not yep. by not because we was trying to be romantic, but because there were no lights. Yep. Candles, a lot of sex, yep. and a whole lot of conversation. Yep. That is what our date nights were. And contrary to what people believe, that's what built the foundation that we are on today. Mm -hmm. That's what makes us comfortable enough to come on here and tell y'all our business. That's what makes us comfortable enough to... Um, not have these high ass expectations of each other. Right. That's what makes us comfortable enough to have hard conversations. Right. Because we had no choice but to divulge our truest selves, even though we've grown a whole lot over the years. At that time, we had to try to build a connection. And that's what we were doing. We didn't have any choice but to get to know each other, which is one of the things that. I think that men and women don't do in this day and age yeah. because social media has got you immediately trying to jump into whatever the hell it is y'all trying to jump into and having the like the whole debate about oh, I'm not going to go on a coffee shop date. Don't take me to get coffee on the first date. Don't do that kind of thing. That's a woman that don't like you, dog. When she tells you that. Or you went to Cheesecake Factory and the woman told you, don't take me here. That's a woman that that don't feel you. She's not feeling you and she's not trying to, to rock with you. She's just trying to see what she can get out of you. A woman that tells you, I don't want to sit down with you and have coffee and have a conversation to get to know who you are, to know if I even want to be around you again after this particular conversation. She's not really rocking with you. She's not really feeling you at the end of the day. It was that conversation. It was those conversations by candlelight because the lights was out it was those conversations you know with okra from a gas stove that we would have you know out at your old crib in clinton it was those conversations that got us here today it was those conversations that had us to actually get to know each other and actually know who the hell it was that we were dating and to and decide like, if i wanted to continue and to decide if i wanted to continue i still believe that today there has to be some level of communicate communication to that regard because mm -hmm. and that's why I th that's why i believe that it's not necessary to go all out on the first date it's because great. the first date should merely be about do i want a second date that's mm -hmm. what it should be about shouldn't be about i'm going to go order everything that i've ever wanted to eat before on this man's dime since it's a first date. If mm -hmm. she's thinking that prior to being with you in that space, something's already off. Something's already amiss. She's trying to get that paper out your dog. And I'm not saying that we aren't worth those things. Absolutely. But if you are building something, then you build it. Build it. Set the foundation first and get, and then get to it. Even if you both can afford it. Even, yes. if, even if both of you That's can afford really to matters. go to, to the $500 restaurant and do the $500 date and, uh, you know, go out of town, go on the trips and be wine and dine. Even if the man is able to do that. At the end of the day, it still behooves you to actually have come. You, you're not, you know, when you're doing all that jet setting and y'all at the five hundred dollar restaurant, y'all not doing that much talking at the end of the day because that, that, that's a stunt job right mm. there, right off the mm. bat for you to go out to dinner and spend two hundred fifty five hundred dollars, you know, on a date uh, just for somebody that you might not even continue to have conversations with after that. And you probably won't because you could be mad that you spent that much money. Like, why are you asking? The number of posts that I see of men blasting women who 
order expensive things. Like you done spent your whole date watching what she eating and what she ordering. And she spent the whole date looking at the menu to find something that she can't mm-hmm. afford. So, so there's no buy. foundation there. There's mm-hmm. nothing authentically happening between y'all. It's just time spent. The expectations for men and women now in the date. That's one of the reasons why they say that the dating pool has pee in it. It's, it's rough. There's no it's way it's no, it's no way in the world that I would want to get back out there now and be in the dating pool. Now, for one, and we both said, I said that I wanted to get married and do it one time, and that be it. A lot of people these days are getting married like they know that they have the opportunity to get out of it That's and do true. something else yeah. again. Uh, they do it like, you know, they get in a lease for a car. You know, or an apartment, you know, at any point, you know, it's going to cost me, but I'll break the lease and get out of this apartment. I'll break the lease and get out of this house. People will do the same thing. I know it'll cost me, but I'll get out of this marriage. And that's not to say to stay in a bad marriage. Yeah. Nobody's telling you to stay in a bad marriage. Nobody's telling you to stay in a loveless marriage. Nobody's telling you to stay in an abusive marriage. Don't be ridiculous because some people try to say that sometimes. I'm talking about those of you who get married in the beginning before all the bad stuff happens and you go into it with the thought process that, hey, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll or just do I something else. I want to have a wedding. Yes. Oh, yes. I want to have a wedding. I just want to have a wedding. Mm-hmm. It don't even matter if this man is mine or if this is forever. I want to have a wedding and I want it to be an extravagant wedding. I want to spend $50,000 to walk down the aisle and stand in front of somebody for 10 minutes and then divorce is on the table. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, really, y'all? This mm-hmm. is, come on. You're going to spend $50,000 on a wedding and divorce is on the table? Y'all letting these housewives mess your life up. Yes. Because that's what they're doing. They, mm-hmm. And they're doing it for entertainment purposes. Ain't nobody on there trying to stay married. So y'all, I mean, that's reality. There's a big difference in that and what's happening. Reality TV is not reality. Just it's like not, social media is not reality. It's not a, it's not Get a back place. to what really matters, which is you and him and foundation. Above everything else, no marriage is going to work without the proper steady foundation. The only way you're going to get a, st- a solid foundation is if you're doing your work and he or she is doing their work. That's where this, the foundation starts. Mm-hmm, Once mm-hmm. you have the foundation, you build upon it, which means that you're constantly doing work. Not just by yourself, work. but now you got to do the work with your partner. It's yeah. constant work. Like by the time you get done doing the work, you're going to die. So it's mm-hmm. always work. You got to be ready for that. If you're not ready to put in work, to work on yourself and to work on your marriage or your relationship, you ain't ready. And that's cool. If you're and not. it's fine if you're not, it's but it's not cool, cool if, you're not. if you're not ready and you're not doing the work. That's not cool. So do the work to get ready. Yeah. So switching gears a little bit, because I do definitely want to talk about this. I sent you this. And again, social media is a crazy place and the things that get traction and the internet stars that we make out of people is incredible. There was a gentleman who has since said that he's 40 years old. He was minding his business going to Whataburger. Uh, and clearly he was going to Whataburger in another state because I don't know who eats Whataburger. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know people who people eat Whataburger. I don't know. I, pe- don't, I don't, I don't know do. people who eat Whataburger. Right? They got some fine uh, onion rings. Look here. Them honey butter biscuits, honey butter, honey biscuits. butter chicken biscuits at Whataburger. Those things are from God himself. <laughs> you ain't say from God. Those things are fantastic. I went to Kroger, just a quick sidebar, and they got some honey butter biscuits. That's what I had Sunday, as a matter of fact. Mm. Those were honey butter biscuits. And I got it with the thought process of, okay, let me see if this is going to taste like Whataburger. It didn't, of course, because theirs is like the honey and the butter is just slathered all over we're it, the gonna, chicken biscuit. We're gonna, I want you to bring that on our next podcast so I can taste it. The honey butter biscuit? Yeah. I'll do that. I've never I, done that I'm going to have to get a lot of them because I don't know if it's going to make it to whatever time. It's just, ain't no meat in it? It's no, just, it's a chicken biscuit. It's oh, okay. a honey butter Chicken biscuit. That's the best thing Whataburger has. If they could just sell that, that's cool. I've had a hamburger from Whataburger, and I'll never eat it again. It's gobbly, gobbly goop. It, it was the worst. It, it was terrible. The bread is terrible. It's not. 
Anyway, that's not even the point. He comes out of Whataburger. The guy has on an outfit that I think we all think would go with a 40-year-old man, uh, you know, coming out of his 30s. Crisp, and I'm talking about crisp polo shirt, crisp jeans, and he had on the New Balances. He had on the 574s, and they was baby blue. And his whole outfit matched. And he got rung up by some young ladies outside of the Whataburger. Uh, his face looked so dejected. But come to find out when you look at the other pictures and look at his social media, that's just his regular look. That's how he looks. He just looks dejected all the time with a twinge of a smile. But they told him that his fit was whack. And, uh, of course, you know, the famous line, I ain't fresh. I ain't fresh. And they was like, no, you're not fresh. <laughs> And, of course, social media jumped to his defense. And I didn't see anybody who did not jump to his defense and say, hey, this guy is fresh. This outfit is clean. I didn't see anybody saying that at all. I, was I saw looking. that. I was look. You did? Yeah. You saw some people that said it wasn't fresh? No, I saw people who said it was fine, that it was. Yeah. That Most of the people, I mean, probably 90% of the people that I saw was like, it's cool. What's wrong with his fit? Of course, there have been several funny different videos and memes from it. They are hilarious, by the way. I was also intrigued by the fact that they're selling a lot of that same color polo and them pants and them New Balances because everybody that did this reenactment had the same exact shirt on and pants and shoes. So what was the issue? Was it the blue on blue? They was said the he wasn't Bal- matching, but they, he was matching perfectly in my mind. I think it was either the New Balances, maybe he had a crease in his jeans, the jeans wasn't tight. I don't know. And I know that polo shirt, that was at least $100, at least. For anybody that buys polos, I had my phase of buying polos. That shirt was $100 off top. I know it. And it was a crispy polo with a collar. And he got he got, he got got dogged out for the fit. So what did you think about that? I don't give a fuck. I give zero, like, I don't think I could care any less. I, I don't know, baby. I don't know why you want to talk about this, because I ain't got nothing. I don't care what he here's, got on. Here's, here's the thing, because occasionally, coming out of this household, because we are older, and, you know, we've had discussions with our grown kids, and even with our 14-year-old at times when we've walked out of the house and what we've had on, is there a quote-unquote dressing old you're dressing like oh an old that's person. what it is yeah oh okay okay oh you weren't getting it at first no i didn't i didn't understand what the issue was yeah they was they was they was dogging him because they were some younger girls they was dogging him because he was his fit was old his fit was mature mature yes it ain't for you then it ain't this i'm not trying to catch y'all He's True. not trying to appease. Now I didn't you. see. I didn't see what happened. Somebody have to tell us. If you in the comments, tell us. You know, was he coming out there trying to holler at him? How did that interaction happen? Because I didn't see that. All I saw was the point where he was sitting there with the with the with. And why does Whataburger? Their cups are huge. <laughs> Those are the biggest cups I've ever seen. Like you know, he got the super size, the super large. But at any rate, that's that's neither here nor there. But you know, that's when he was sitting there with I've the cups. I've never really and, been like my parents did not raise us with name brands and things of that nature i did not raise my children that way it's never i'm more of a substance type of person and i believe that i can rock anything so if i go to rainbow and i get me a ten dollar outfit and i wear it one night and i put it in the dryer and that thing draw up i don't care because i spent ten dollars so i don't really i've never been that kind of person and our friend fingerprint put me up on new balance a long time ago. Cause mm-hmm. I, I made a joke to him one time back then when we were younger, I was like, what are these shoes? And he put me up on game about new balance. He was like, nah, 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 they fresh, you know, like yes, fresh. Um, so I didn't even have the awareness then about all I knew was Nike and I didn't even have any, but I recognized them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he put me up on those. So I respect the new balance. Um, you gotta respect them. You gotta respect them, but I, it's unfortunate that you know you can look at a person and what they're wearing and make some sort of judgment about them 
about whether it's their age or their financial ability. White mm -hmm. people don't have these issues. We talk all the time about how white people show up at at, um, at music awards and go on stage and they look like they just literally rolled out the bed and mm -hmm. went up and got on stage and they got like more somebody, money. Like somebody unfolded. They got them more money than stage. you and your mama and her mama and that mama yes. and they not spending none of that money on this frivolous shit like what they wearing. It doesn't hold that much value. They have on some Chuck Taylor, some jeans and a, and a wrinkled t-shirt. And they will go out and they will do what you paid to see. Mm -hmm. They gonna give you a show. That's but it. us... We got to go spend thousands of dollars on one outfit in order to be recognized or to be uh, accepted by us as a community. That's flawed. I don't buy into that. I'm not, I, I pay when I go to a concert or a comedy show or whatever. If you looking hot, regardless of whether it's old man hot or new man hot, I don't care. If you looking hot, cool. But that's not what I'm there for. What I'm there for is the talent, the substance that you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Am I, like, not the norm? No, I think you are the norm for people our age. I, mm -hmm. think, you, I think you are the norm. Like, you know, I had my sneaker phase, and I'm still, you know, a bit of a sneaker head but you know when i had kids you know when my you know my oldest and my son was born i couldn't be a sneaker head anymore because they I, were the sneaker because 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 they needed clothes and they needed pampers and sure. they needed food so i couldn't be a sneaker head anymore but i was always getting the freshest jays before they were born which you passed on to your son yeah and to my daughter and to both of the both of the daughters, <laughs> all of them, as a matter Ooh, of fact, they took me off of buying shoes duty because I was gonna buy something to put some shoes on their feet. They took me off the duty altogether. That's his duty. Like I cannot buy shoes. They don't trust me. Listen, to buy man, shoes. a fourteen year old, you not it, it's over with for that. We not going We can't go back. We we have gone past the point of no return with a fourteen year old. We can't get anything. Bud Jordans and Dunks, and if it's anything, or you know the Air Force Ones that she has, but we can't get anything less than Jordans and Dunks. And if we get anything less than that, she's not gonna wear it, and it's not happening. We so put, I ain't buying them. We put ourselves there. This is where we are. Not and we. This is, and this is what. Well, her older sisters and brothers did it as well. Yeah, but not me. Not you. Not me. I ain't paying three hundred dollars for nobody's shoes. And well, that's what she literally be wanting. She literally be wanting three hundred dollars shoes, girl. You need a job. You yes, need a job so is, you can buy your unemployed. own self. She but unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever one on whatever day, there she has loved ones, sisters, aunties, and all these kind of people who give her what she wants. So I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know. She's not the youngest grandkid or the youngest niece now she's the youngest she's the teenager she's the teenager so she's in between like the next one after her is four so you know and who knows Ooh. what she's gonna get once she gets of age but right now you know our 14 year old gets doted on because all of her siblings are older and they're sneaker heads she's got tt's and she's got you know other folks that dote on her so they get that as well and she just goes in and she just gets these shoes and but that's she's really the, and, that's ahead, really, and that's really what you know she'll get some shirts t-shirts off of sheen and some pants off of sheen and that outfit will be six dollars <laughs> and then the shoes <laughs> will be 300 you know what i'm saying and that's what she'll do at the end of the day so i mean it's wild it's it's, it's crazy these days this is what's you know this is what we have to deal with as parents but i think you know, that's irresponsible i think that uh, it is I, I, like you know even my son like he'll go to walmart and buy some clothes or something like that and mm -hmm. i'm sorry if this is not cool son sorry but uh but he's gonna pay money for his shoes what is that like i literally seriously want to know like are women out there checking for shoes shoes are really you can get and i'm going to tell you you can get by with because here's the thing with dudes we can go get a pair of levi's levi's since 1800 the standard you know unless you're a dude as you know you want to get the fancy jeans that folks are wearing these days but you can get you a pair of levi's and you can seriously get you 
Really, you can get you Levi's and a polo. And if you got Levi's, polo, and some Jordans on, you good because you going to – Except if you, you this gonna, dude at Waterbury. Well, he had on New Balance. If he had, oh. had on Jordans, it could have possibly been different. Wow. But he had on New Balance because young cats don't understand – New Balance. So young, young cats don't get the New Balance like we get it. They don't get the you know they don't get the Adidas like we get it. Oh, that's like I got terrible. a I got a closet full of you know I got Converse, I got Pony, uh, I got uh, Lacago Sportif, uh, I got Sacconis, I got you know this is what I got in my closet back here. But the young folk don't know about Sacconi and Lacago Sportif and Converse. They know about Chuck Taylors, but they don't know about the Converse with the actual Converse that Magic Johnson and Larry Bird used to wear. Like, I got I got those shoes or a pair of ponies. Like, young cats don't understand that. They just know now I'm going to either get some Dunks or I'm going to get some Jordans or I'm going to get them big, thick-ass Balenciaga shoes that look like Moonwalker shoes. You know what I'm saying? They're going to get those. But you're not even getting looked at from head to toe these days. You're getting looked at from toe to head. Wow. I in cared, some instances. I cared in some instances. more about the clean cut. Like, I, like yeah, and if dude a, was fresh. Dudes could, dudes I could take fresh. you wearing whatever you had on as long as your hair was cut and your face was trimmed up nicely. Like, I don't, I, that's what I cared about. I don't want you out here looking like a bag of bum, but I don't really care about what you spent on your fit like i don't care about that at all because i believe that you can carry anything if you have the confidence to be able to do so and i still believe that to this day and looking at the guy on the picture he looked fine to me i mean the only thing i would say is he looked like he was going to a barbecue and not a club but that's it here's the thing people said that outfit that he had on that was a post but it was true he could either be going to the club he could be going to a barbecue he could be going to work. And also, depending on what denomination he is, he could have been going to church. Mm -hmm. So there's four different things that he could have been doing in that outfit. That is an all-purpose yeah. fit. And he actually took time with it because them jeans was, cre was creased. creased. Now, I don't even see people doing that no more. They don't. But I don't know if that's the, what gave creases, away his I don't age. Know, I don't know if creasing the jeans, it, I, it was a thing. It was. That's what but gave away his age. I stopped doing the creasing thing myself. But, yeah, that does give away your age because we used to – Crease the shit out them jeans. That was a cabbage. time where everybody, them Jabo jeans. They had to be creased. Everybody and their mama, even the chicks, was creasing the Jabo jeans. Had to be creased. Absolutely. It's, it's no, had to be creased. I had a fit, and I'm going to tell you, and I know this because when I was in the seventh grade, I had a fit. Uh, that was at the time where Izod was really big, Paul Lacoste, which now they call it Paul Lacoste now, but it was just Izod when I was earlier. And that's, they still call it Izod, I guess. But everybody was getting Izod. This was before they got the polo. And my mother went, and she would never buy me an Izod from Mac Ray's, from the actual department store, because the Izod's in there was running pretty high at that time when I was in the seventh grade. She found an Izod at like a TJ Maxx type store mm -hmm. and it was a nice eyes eyed it was green and and yellow striped nice white collar it looked I've just like his shirt uh and i had a pair of khaki pants and my mama had finally caved in and for christmas i got a pair of gangster nikes mm. with the light blue stripe mm, come on now it didn't even match the shirt <laughs> mind you the gangster nikes did not match the shirt at all whatsoever the khakis and the eyes eyed matched Gangsta Nikes were light blue. The light blue swoosh. I'm talking about that's the default swoosh back in the day for Nike. That's what I had. A pair of those Gangsta Nikes. And that's what I wore to every party. You know, I got the that whole outfit? thing. That, that one outfit or those yes. shoes? No, that one outfit. <laughs> and I've kind of kept with that motif through the rest of my life, too. You know, when I get to the point, when I get a favorite shirt or a favorite outfit and I know I'm killing them in it, I'm going to pop it on. I know how to space it out in between, but depending on what the function is, you know, Baby, I got a, I got a going out shirt that don't that I'm work. Put on. Let me tell you something. Stop doing that. That don't work because we don't remember. Care, really. We I'm, remember. You don't. You it don't really apply to you. Yeah. But brothers out there who are trying to like date and whatever, we remember the last time you had that on. I, I'm not okay when you're dating. You can't really duplicate the shit. Like I'm talking about for the people out in the world. If I'm going out without you. 
you know. But chicks at these bars, if you go into the same bar, it don't matter if it's three months or, or three weeks Could in be. between. Could we be. gonna remember that if it's as fly as you think. We gonna remember the last time you had it on, and then it's gonna become every time that dude come out, he wearing the same thing. Well, there's actually some people like that now, uh, but you know, I digress. But yeah, I wore that outfit, school dances, church youth functions. Were you pulling any bras? I was in the seventh grade. I don't even know. No, I don't guess I was. You should have changed your shirt. I don't know. It was Izod. I had Izod on. I had on Gangster Night. So for me, I'm fresh. I'm at the pinnacle. I'm at the top tier of what I could be doing. I got an eyes out on and I put it on and it, you know, it almost disintegrated because I wore it so much at the time. And then after that, uh, you know, I think I got to buy another eyes out after that. Never got a polo. I did not get a polo until I was able to buy a polo for myself. My mother refused to get it and would not get it at all whatsoever well my word for the people out there who who may be contemplating this whole thought process and subject matter Mm -hmm. my word for you is if you have to put on an outfit to get attention there's something significantly wrong with you Mm -hmm. and your thought process and if your measurement of your worth is based on the amount of money you spend on your clothes that as well is a significant issue. So again, I have to use the to, phrase if if we're gonna end it, uh you can have on the freshest outfit in the world and you can have on all the latest stuff. But as I said earlier, if you are a fuck nigga and you have no game, it won't matter. You'll be a well dressed, lonely dude. So you got to decide what you want to be at the end of the day. You want to be a well-dressed, lonely dude, or you want to be fresh, like our partner that was at Whataburger with the fresh outfit on, and he's going to come up. He put official in front of his name on his Facebook page. He finna get paid just from that. Getting dissed in front of Whataburger, he finna get paid. Engagement finna go through the roof, and that's how it happens. It takes us back all the way back to Give me two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for me to lose this weight. It goes all the way back to that. It's Same just a cycle. Time. It keeps happening. We got to figure out something. We got to <laughs> figure something out. We got to figure it out. I don't know what it is, but we got to figure it out. Back in the day, we could have just made a sex tape and put it out. It would be cool. We can still do that. You want to do that? I don't know, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know if I was really expecting you to answer like that, but you did. I mean, I, you know, shit. I guess we could. It caused a stir. I'm pretty sure. It would cause a stir. Child. Like, or maybe not. Or maybe not. Like, oh, like, that's just cause yeah, queen fucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they practically do that anyway every time that they're out. Same thing. Girl, they just fucking. At any rate, we appreciate you guys for hollering at us, man. Uh, thanks for stopping by, of course, again. If you want us to talk about anything, hit us on the email, cosandqueen at gmail.com. All right, we're going to get out of here, man. This has been episode 71. We're getting close to the end of season three. And then we'll take a little hiatus, and then we'll be back. You know, we got to try to figure out what we're going to do set-wise for the next time. You know what I'm saying? We come back in season four. We got to dazzle them. I think we've reached the end of the rope almost. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to top myself when we get there. Got to get it figured out. Can you just make sure that I don't have to sit up like this? I need to be comfortable. Okay. Let me figure it out. Let's I mean, you know, something. we can just lay down in the bed back there. I'm with that. Help. I'm absolutely with it. Let me see if I can figure that out. If I figure that out, we're going to be on to some shit. <laughs> Baby. Right then, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. If I can figure out how to do that and get that right, man. At any rate, man, I'm Kaz. And I'm Queen. And this has been According to Kaz and Queen. We'll have you guys next time. Thanks.